This is why in, in the Buddhist philosophy, you know, Buddha attained nirvana. So that meant he could stay in union with the gods, so to speak. He, he attained the highest form of, of subjective experience, which might, be, which might be something like total immersion in, in bliss and meaning. But he rejected it because he went back into the world to help other people attain nirvana, or at least to move towards it, because he realized that there was no individual redemption without the redemption of all. And you, if you don't understand that, then you're just not very wise. And so you're trying to be a force for good in the world. And that doesn't mean just good for you. That's just, it's just blind. Because there isn't any isolated you. It, that isn't how things are. That isn't how reality lays itself out. So, what is your current thinking on Orthodox Christianity? The Orthodox Christians like me. I don't know why. But I think I have some idea, I guess. Um, I've got a lot of letters from religious people, a lot of lot from from Muslims, from Jews, uh, from Orthodox Jews in particular. Strangely enough, um, from Christian monk monks, um, but a lot from Orthodox Christians. And I think the reason for that, as far as I can tell, is that the Orthodox look at Christianity from a slightly different angle than the Protestants and the Catholics. And I'm not putting down the Protestants and the Catholics. They have a perspective, a reason for their viewpoint, but. What's happened in the West, I think, and this is a dreadful oversimplification, so pre please forgive me, is that the West has viewed Christianity more as a set of beliefs that are analogous in some sense to a, th a cognitive theory of the world. So to be a Christian in the West, you have to accept that Christ died for your sins and that you're redeemed. So you have to accept Christ as your redeemer. And that really means to state that you believe a set of propositions about Christ, that he was the son of God and that his death and resurrection, his sacrifice redeemed mankind. And that, and then you partake in that redemption by laying out that, that accordance with a set of facts, let's say. I don't, I understand why that's how it's worked out, but I think there's a big risk in that. And I don't think the Orthodox fell into that to the same degree. Their idea more, and this is there in, Protest, in Protestantism and, and Catholicism too. It's there, but it's, it's given more secondary, more implicit emphasis. And I think that's a problem, especially in the modern world. The Orthodox would say, as near as I can tell, that you should pick up your damn cross and stumble up the hill. That's your job, right? And the cross is the X where everyone is located. You're right at the center of reality. You're suffering and dying and being reborn all the time at the center of reality as you transform. And you have to accept that and embrace it. You have, to, And that's a very, very hard thing to do because it means to embrace all your flaws and the flaws of reality and the tragedy of existence and your death and the sum total of human evil, all of that unbelievably demanding requirement. But you do what you can to do that. And then not only do you pick up your cross, so to speak, but you stumble uphill towards the city of God. Do You stumble up towards what's good. And that's your destiny. And that's where meaning is to be had. And the Orthodox lay that out quite well. That's your goal, is the imitation of Christ. And Christ is the Logos. This is the Christian story. Christ is the Logos that God uses at the beginning of time to transform pre-cosmogonic chaos into habitable order. Truthful speech. So that's the thing. You're, you're, the fact that you're capable of uttering truthful speech is an indication that you've shouldered your cross and are stumbling uphill. A very coherent theory. And the Orthodox, I think, have done a very good job of keeping that idea at the forefront of their, of their belief. And so that's what I think about Orthodox Christianity.